If you have, let's sing together. It won't be very long till this short life shall end. And it won't be very long until Jesus shall descend. And then the dead in Christ from beds of clay shall rise to meet the Lord and King. And up yonder in the sky, and it won't be very long. And it won't be very long. Until Jesus shall appear, and that day is drawing near, and will you be ready then, and to meet the ransom throne, and get ready for that day, and it won't be very long, and it won't be very long, till here we cease to roam. And it won't be very long until all the saints get home. And then with smiling face, and we'll walk the streets of gold. And sing the Savior's praise, and where saints are never old. And it won't be very long, and it won't be very long till Jesus shall appear. And that day is drawing near. And will you be ready then to meet the ransom throne and get ready for that day? And it won't be very long, and it won't be very long till earth shall pass away. And it won't be very long till works of men decay. But Jesus has prepared in a happy dwelling place For all who look above and trust His matchless grace And it won't be very long, and it won't be very long Till Jesus shall appear, and that day is drawing near And will you be ready there? To meet the ransom throne and get ready for that day. And it won't be very long, and it won't be very long, and it won't be very long until Jesus shall appear. And that day is drawing near. And will you be ready then to meet the ransom throne and get ready for that day? And it won't be very long. Amen. Let's turn to page number 437. Page number 437, and after which we have scripture in prayer. Again, that's page number 437, and after which we'll have scripture and we will have prayer. <clears throat> if you have it, let's sing together. Living below in this old sinful world, and hardly a comfort can afford, and striving alone to face temptation. And tell me where and could I? Go but to the Lord. Where and could I go? Oh, where could I go? And I'm seeking a refuge for my soul. Oh, oh and anything a friend to save me in thee. And tell me where and could I go but to the Lord. Nay, Birds are kind, and I love them, everyone. And we can get along in sweet accord. And but, and when my soul needs manna from up, then tell me where and could I go but to the Lord? And tell me where and could I go, oh, where could I go? And I'm seeing. King a refuge for my soul, oh, oh, oh and anything a friend to save me in thee, and tell me where and could I go but to the Lord. Life here is grand with friends I love so dear, and comfort I get from God's own word. 
heard and yet and when I face the chilling hands up and tell me where and could I go but to the Lord where and could I go oh where could I go and I'm seeking a refuge for my soul oh oh and he Thing a friend to say me in thee and tell me where and could I go but to the Lord and tell me where and could I go oh where could I go and I'm seeking a refuge for my soul oh oh and thee thing a friend to say me in thee and tell me where and could I go but to the Lord. Let the church say amen. This morning's scripture will come from the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews we'll read out of chapter 4. Chapter 4 out of the book of Hebrews. We will read verses 8 through 16. Once again, Hebrews chapter 4, and we will begin with verse 8. If you have it, say amen. And it reads, For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of thought, thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Amen. At this point in time, we'll turn it over to the brothers for prayer. Let us go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we once again continue to give honor and thanks to you, dear Lord, for your glory. Even as you put it up on us, you give it to us that we do not deserve it. You still hold out your hand and ask, come. We thank you, dear Lord, for this time that you have given us to give all things back to you. We ask you and thank you for your manservant who is about to come forth. We thank you for allowing him to be here for so many years and doing your will. But not only him, but his family also, that is the backbone. So you allow them to lift him up when he's down, to allow them to encourage him when he's feeling low. But most of all, allowing them to continue to hold fast to you, dear Lord, where all help come from. We ask you, dear Lord, as he come forward, that he does not add nor subtract. 
And what he says, dear Lord, do not fall on deaf ears, but we can use it in our everyday life and teach others, dear Lord, who does not know you. We so thank you, dear Lord, for the families that you have brought our way throughout the last year and from this year starting. That we would not let last year be our best year, but this year that you are blessed us to see be our best years to come. And we thank you. And we ask you, dear Lord, forgive us for all of our sins and shortcomings. Ones we know of and ones we do not know of. And when saints can come around, dear Lord, we ask you to let us let you do the fighting for us. Not try to take him on ourselves. Because we know we cannot fight a spirit. Only a spirit can fight a spirit. And we thank you for all the blessings you give us on the day to day. This is our prayer we ask in your son Jesus Christ's name. Let us all say, Amen. As we prepare for this morning's lesson, let's turn to page number 248. Page number 248. I was looking at Brother Ison this morning. Ison, you're shrinking, Doc. You're shrinking. Lord have mercy. Give me some motivation. I'm going the other way. Well, let, let, me, let me leave that one alone. <laughs> I didn't make that resolution, but I looked at myself like I know I got to do better. So I'm going to try to do better. Y'all heard me here, so don't, don't, don't crucify me. <laughs> I know that my Redeemer lives. We're going to sing the first, the second, and the fourth standard as we prepare for this morning's lesson. And if you haven't, let's all sing together. I know that my Redeemer lives and ever prays for me. And I know eternal life he gives from sin and sorrow. Free and I know, I know that my Redeemer lives, and I know, I know eternal life He gives, and I know, I know that and my Redeemer lives, and He wills that I should hold. Me be in word and thought in deed in night his holy face may see when from this earth life free and I know I know that my Redeemer lives and I know I know eternal life he gives and I know and I know that and my Redeemer lives. And I know that over yonder stands a place prepared and for me. And a home, a house not made with hands most wonderful to see. And I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. And I know, I know eternal life He gives. And I know, and I know that and my Redeemer lives. somewhat heavy today going through the experience of uh, the passing of one of our senior elders and his beloved wife. It is rare but it happens that 
God will take both the man and the woman so close together. But they were close. And uh, <clears throat> we need to pray for the family that things will be reasonably consoling, though it is traumatic for them. Brother Mallory was a good man, a great man, a reliable man. He never missed a beat. If he complained, he kept it to himself. <clears throat> and when he made a change to become a New Testament Christian, he did it quickly without delay. And certainly having the time, been spent time with him since 1986, uh, we certainly are going to miss he and his beloved wife. On Friday, uh, the schedule will be uh, 8.30 will be visitation. 9.30 will be service, and we will do the committal right here at the church uh, because they both will be buried in the military facilities in the Joliet area. And as a church, we're not going to have a repass as we normally do on a lower level, but we intend to give plates of food as people leave the sanctuary, those who come to the worship, they will be served as they leave. To show our love and our graciousness as much as we can in the fellowship. And I appreciate those who are working in that area to make that uh, possible. On behalf of Brother Mallory and Sister Mallory, and, of course, let's pray for the children. Uh, as I know, it's a hard thing to lose your mother and father in just a matter of a few days. It's one thing to lose them a year or two apart, but when it's just a few days, <clears throat> it's a whole different ball game. We're living in times when people are do strange things. I was telling my wife earlier that uh, I heard on the radio this lady, her son, had COVID, about 13 years old, and so that she wouldn't catch COVID, she put him in the trunk of a car. <coughs> I thought I'd heard it all, but now I've heard something that I hadn't heard before. But let me uh, make you laugh a little bit. Yesterday I was sitting on the couch and, and my beloved wife, as she does from time to time, asked did I want anything to eat. And I said, well, it's still early in the afternoon. And uh, I said, you know, grilled cheese might be good. And uh, she went on and fixed the grilled cheese. And uh, I ate it fairly quickly. And then uh, I said, uh, it would be good to have another one. <laughs> and she said, now, didn't you get a gift at Christmas? Uh, a book for those who don't know how to cook. <laughs> and so I... Uh, I, I wish I wish I'd have brought. It. I, I, I I I I pulled up my book, my cookbook, and my cookbook said you get two slices of bread, and then you get some butter, and you melt the butter, and you get a slice of cheese. You, you know, and 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 you you know you 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 you. you you know, you browned it on one side, etc. It was it was pretty straightforward. You know, that's how I can cook a grilled cheese. Man. Goodness gracious! Now you now you know, <clears throat> for me to have a book of somebody that don't know how to cook, you know where that came from. That 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 came from my eldership, uh, led by Brother Slate. 
Lord have mercy. So I, 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 I've been reading that. I've been reading that book. I'm, I, I think I can cook just about anything now. Yeah, it's, it's designed for people like me, Brother Hall. You know, I can cook now. Yeah, I, I can definitely make a grilled cheese sandwich. <clears throat> Lord have mercy. That's all right, Slay. What goes around comes around. Lord have mercy. <clears throat> We have been blessed to see another year. We don't know what this year is going to result in. We got a lot of uh, this. Uh, our country right now is really too blessed. Uh, we we haven't suffered really. Uh, when we can sit around and complain about who's going to vote and how to vote and all of that, when there was a time that people couldn't vote, and we have people that are nasty enough to try to uh, hurt some while they help their own power and their position. Uh, we have the Omicron that's ripping through our society. We have nature acting up, but just doing its job. They call it science. I do too. But when I see science, I see God. God made science. Amen. You got up this morning, there was ice on the ground. Sun shines, ice goes away. That's science, but it's also God. God made science. God made kinetic energy and potential energy. Science talks about it. God made gravity. Science talks about it. God made birth. Science talks about it. It is God that controls everything. And the quicker we learn, I think the better we're going to be. Our theme for this year, if we can get this year rolling without anybody getting seriously sick and out and without having to deal with another variant, if everybody, if you haven't had your shot, go get your shot. And don't be acting like you got a shot and you know you haven't got a shot. Go get your shot, okay? Uh, get that booster, get that booster rooster. Now we had, you know, it's amazing how we had all those other shots. You know, we had tetanus shot, polio shot, whooping cough, chicken pox, measles. We had all them shots. Now they want to complain about this. Go get your shot and be done with it. Lord have mercy. Our themes for this year. We open up on last Lord's Day. Yesterday's hurts. Today's helps. And tomorrow's healing. All of us, we are sitting here right now with hurts from yesterday. Some of the hurts you caused yourself. Some of the hurts, they were caused by others. And some of the hurts are circumstantial. But no matter what, you got some hurts. And don't act like you're the only one that's got some hurts. We all have some hurts. But do you know that hurts are positive because hurts provoke you to move to get some help. You see, if you don't have some hurts, you won't get help. That's just like now with this virus. If enough people die, the, the people will start going and getting up. To, some people won't have, you know, when they, you know, oh, I wish I, don't get into that wish I had a club. Hurts can be good. Hurts make us see life as it really is. Hurts 
give us pain and provoke us and motivate us to seek help. Now here's the real, real challenge. Yesterday I was hurt, but today I need to get some help. And the real question is, I, the help is needed, but I need to know what type of help do I need. In other words, first of all, when I get some help, I really want the here and now help. In other words, when I need help, I don't want help 30 years from now. I want help in the here and the now. Because I'm hurt right now, I need some help now, not tomorrow. All right. And when I get the help, I don't need a stopping and starting help. I need an endless supply of help. I, I, I don't want, you know, sometimes people say, well, I'll help you. And then as soon as they help, by five minutes, they're gone. I need an endless supply of help. And not only that, I need help that will reduce my hurt. See, sometimes you get help, but it's not really the help that you need. Are you with me? See, we all have been in that scenario where, you know, somebody has helped us, but that really wasn't what I needed. But I want help that will max my needs. And not only that. When I get my help today, and in 2022, I need a partner that works with me as my helper. In other words, when I say partnership, I don't like partnerships in business, but I like partnerships in spirituality because I know that Jesus will always cover his side of the bargain. The problem is, will I cover my side of the bargain? All of us, we were hurt last year in some way, but now we need help in some way, and Jesus will be a partner to us if we only allow him to come into our lives. Now let me share something with you about human beings. Human beings have limitations. Now, a lot of times we say, you know, my mommy will help me, and my daddy will help me, my child will help me, my son will help me, you know, my job will help me, you know, my doctor will help me, my lawyer will help me. They have limitations. Only Jesus has unlimited help supply. Today's help, you've got to understand even though you may go to Walgreens and get some help with your medication, you need Jesus to keep working on that medication as it applies to you to give you what you need to correct your situation. You need a partner that's going to stick with you. We got to stop praying with the Lord and praying with the church and putting it in the background. Just because you got a little snow on the ground, you don't walk to church. You ride in an air condition. Lord, have mercy. You know, we make excuses for everything. We are the most blessed country in the world. Well, they blessed, but I ain't got nothing. Whatever you have, the Lord can take one biscuit and feed 10,000 folks. Let's decipher quickly the help that Jesus brings. Y'all with me now? All right, now. Let's look through the eyes of King David. All right, let's swing back to the Old Testament in Psalms chapter 46, if you have your Bibles right quick. In the book of Psalms, chapter 46. Ah, beginning with verse number one. All right, hang with me now. Now, don't get all excited now. I mean, just, 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 just hang with me. Now, listen to the psalmist. 
in verse 1. God, I love to start off with the word God. God is our refuge. Didn't say refuse. <laughs> I love my wife. I love my wife. God is our refuge. Refuse, F-U-S-E, is trash. Refuge is our protection. God is our refuge and strength. A very, now here we come now, not tomorrow, 30 years from now, but a what? A very present help. A lot of times, well, I'm looking for some help. Well, where is the present help? If you're smart, if you've got any kind of spiritual Christian intelligence, Start with Jesus first. He is the present help. Then he'll kick you into a referral system whereby he'll rely on somebody else to provide the actual help. But start with the Lord first. Why do we wait until we get flat on our back with hurt? Before we call on Jesus, who is the present help in the time of need. We wait until we are flat on our back and we heard it, then all of a sudden we want to call on Jesus. We want to come back to him. Your Lord, your Lord, would y'all pray for me? Now, there's nothing wrong with that. I want you to do that. It's better to pray, it's better to pray when you're in trouble than not to pray at all. At least give it a shot. But I'm trying to get you in the right sequence. Put the Lord first in everything that you do. If you want to be helped today, put him first. Not only that, he's a present help. That means he's my refuge. That means when I got a hole in my roof, he'll close it up. When I got holes in my pocket, and the money comes in, but it seems like I can't get ahead. You know the Lord can take money from you, and you don't know where it's going. All you got to do is just get sick. Your insurance only pays a certain part of it, and you got to pay the rest. A whole lot of people go broke because they have inadequate insurance. No, no, no. They don't go broke because they have inadequate insurance. They go broke because they were hurt by not taking care of the good body that God gave them. See, what we got to learn to do is I'm dealing with hurts today because of what I did yesterday. I got to accept the fact that I contributed to the problem and stop blaming everybody else for the problem. When I accept the problem, now King David is saying now in verse number two, he says, therefore will not we fear though the earth be removed, and though mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake, what is he saying? The Lord will manage our fear of nature. Yes, even though we may have droughts, a, a tornado, that tornado that went through Kentucky stayed on the ground for some 200 miles. I, I was raised that tornadoes, they bounce up and down. And as a matter of fact, if you get caught in a tornado, just get in a ditch somewhere. And they'll, they'll just pass right over. Well, this tornado just stayed on the ground for 200 miles. And anything that was in its way, anything that was man-made or nature-made, it moved out of the way. And I don't care how strong it was. You don't mess with the Lord. Let me bring it to the human side. The Lord took Brother Mallory away and he took his wife away almost at the same time. 
All of the time we spent together from 1986, and all of you with Brother Matt, you never thought that husband and wife would be leaving this world at this, almost at the same time, and both of their caskets would be here at North Shore at the same time. You didn't see that coming. The Lord knew it was coming. The Lord got them ready for it. Watch King David now. In verse 4, he said, now, now watch how, how the Lord works now. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God. In other words, gladness is in the mix. When the Lord brings help for the hurt that you had yesterday, he is your partner and he brings gladness. See, sometimes when we as human beings bring help, we bring more sadness. But the Lord brings gladness. When you come to the house of the Lord, you come for gladness, not for sadness and madness. You know, every now and then somebody walk in the church, well, I'm mad, I'm mad, I'm mad. Well, just go on back out. Oh, you mad, don't need you coming in here. Madness belongs out in the street. You know, you know, don't come in here mad. You may be mad at somebody at home or some mad at somebody in the street. So we come in here to worship. The Lord brings gladness. Look at verse number five. He said, Now God is in the midst of her, and she shall not be moved. This is parallel to what Jesus said. Jesus said, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, we may have some hellish folk in the church, but they won't hurt the church. Lord have mercy. See, he, he designed the church for hellish folk, for wicked folk, people like me, wicked folk. But, you know, it, it's amazing how he can take wicked folk like Terry Atwater and get the wickedness out of them. All he has to do is just allow some hurts to happen in life. And it's amazing what kind of changes we will make. You know, hurts will provoke us to change and seek the help that we ought to have. But as long as we got it going good and so forth, you know, we, we'll keep freelancing and freelancing. But the Lord is in the midst of the church. And not only that, let me wrap this thing up now. In verse number 7, as we look at King David, he says now, The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our what? He is our refuge. Here's what I like about this is, the Lord is our permanent partner. Many times, you know, you have somebody that's going to help you do a job. You know, maybe, maybe around the church. You plan to do something around the church, and somebody say, I'll be there. I'll be there. What time are you going to be there? Oh, I'm going to be there at 8 o'clock on Friday. You know, 9 o'clock they don't show up. 10 o'clock they don't show up. The Lord will be there waiting on you before you get there. Amen. You got to begin to look at that. Now, uh, in, in terms of getting our help, that was through the eyes of King David. But let me call Jeremiah back to the table. I, I, you know, I've, I've learned to love Jeremiah in the last few weeks here. Just to, he's, a, he's an awesome, awesome minister, an awesome prophet. In chapter 31, look at chapter 31 of Jeremiah, right quick. Uh, verses 10 through 14. Let's look at, as Jeremiah is crying, he's known as the crying prophet. And... Uh, he sees the Lord's help through some other eyes. All right, let's look at the eyes through whom, how he sees the Lord's help. Because I, I, what, what I'm trying to do is, we, we, in, 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 in 2020, we were hurt by the virus. In 2021, we got some help by the virus. How we got some help? We got a vaccine. Somebody developed the vaccine. That was the help. Now in 2022, it's healing time. But let me tell you, you can't get the healing time unless you go through helping time. Everybody, everybody with me? If you break your leg, you got to get some help to set the broke, the break. When it's set, you go through the healing. But you know, when you go through the healing, there is some pain as you heal. But you need somebody to keep you glad and not sad while you go through the healing. So even in good times, there'll be some sadness, but when you got somebody that brings gladness, that makes your life a whole lot better. A lot of times, you know, you know, as I get old, you know, a lot of people say they don't, they don't want to get old. It's a blessing to get old. 
But you know what I, I have seen as I get old right now? There's only two things that are important. One is Jesus and his church. And, and the second is health. When I miss Isom being here, health kept him from being here. Mallory's gone. Health took him out of here. Wasn't money, wasn't cars, wasn't houses, wasn't food, health. Who controls health? The master does. All right, now let's look through the eyes of Jeremiah. In Jeremiah 31 and verse number 12, uh, he says, Therefore, they shall come and sing in the height of Zion, that's Jerusalem, and shall flow together to the goodness of the Lord. For watch what the Lord does when he helps. For wheat and for wine and for oil and for the young of the flock and of the, of the herd. Ah, what is Jeremiah saying? The Lord helps you materially. Amen? Now, 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 if, if, if you've got a raise on your job, the Lord helps you materially. All right? But materialism is not the key. When you put the Lord first, I called Jesus to the table. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness. Then all of these other things will be added unto you. When you put Jesus first, he'll bless you with a few other things. Lord, have mercy. When you put Jesus first, I got to know Brother Slay, then he blessed me with a book on how to cook. That's a blessing. Now watch this, watch this. That's a better blessing than the catfish. Because I can go to the cookbook. It will tell me how to cook my own catfish in case Slay will not provide me with catfish. Lord have mercy. Isn't that something? He gave me a blessing. He didn't know what he was doing for me. <laughs> Jeremiah, Jeremiah, the Lord helps us materially. Now in that same verse, Jeremiah, he says, uh, And their souls shall be as water garden, and they shall not sorrow any more at all. The Lord helps us personally. You feel sorrowful today? The Lord is the antidote for sorrow. Ah, does your garden, does your life need to be watered so that it's not dry? The Lord will bring wetness to your life. The Lord will help you personally. Now let me share something with you. All of us sitting here, we have different needs, we have different hurts, etc. The Lord will help us whatever our personal needs happen to be. Because my need is not the same as your need. But we all need Jesus. That's why he said, you know, there's neither Jew nor Gentile, but we all are one in Christ Jesus. However, we need different aspects of the Savior. My skills are different than your skills. My talents are different than your talents. My experiences are different than your experiences. My health is different than your health. We all have different needs from the same Jesus. I don't care whether you're rich sitting in the White House or you're poor sitting in the outhouse reading newspapers. The Lord will help whatever your need happens to be. That's what Jeremiah said. He'll help you personally. All right, look at verse number 13. Here's a good one right here. Then shall the virgin rejoice in the dance, both young men and old together. That's a problem we got right now. Young men don't respect old men. Old men want young men to respect them. So we have what is called a social problem. The Lord will help us not only materially, 
but it will help us socially. Amen. Now, as he says now in verse number 13, For I will t- <coughs> turn their mourning into joy, and will comfort them, and make them rejoice from their sorrow. Anybody that's sorrow today, let me tell you something. Your money won't take away sorrow. Your education will not remove sorrow. Your children won't remove sorrow. Your employer won't remove sorrow. But the Lord can remove sorrow. Let not your heart be troubled. You know, Job said now, man that is born of a woman, his days are full of trouble. The Lord said, let not your heart be troubled. Now, if you watch the Bible class like, but you might get some of this. But I'm not going to get into that because you got to watch the Bible class. Just because, just because we don't have it here doesn't mean you can't go to the Bible class. I just thought I'd drop that one. You look at everything else on your cell phone. Yeah, yeah, you look at all that other crooked stuff. Yeah, yeah, okay. Now watch, now watch Jeremiah. He helps us materially. He helps us personally. He helps us socially. But let me go to verse number 14. We've got to get one more in here. He said, and I will satiate. Y'all heard that word before? Satiate the soul. What, what is he saying? He's saying that the Lord will drown your soul with spirituality. In other words, we need to be, you know, a lot of times people say, you know, you know, child, you go to church too much. There's no such thing as going to church too much. In fact, you can't go to church too much because if you understood what the church is, you are the church. You are the church seven days a week. You can't go to the church. You are the church seven days a week. Now, you just go to the assembly house on certain days because the Lord requires us to fellowship together every now and then. But you are the church seven days a week. You can't cuss on Monday and be blessed on Sunday. You got to... You're the church seven days. People say, well, I, I, I miss church. No, no, you are the church. You miss the fellowship. Now, we got some, they think they're wise. They can go to church on, on, on you know, on, on the internet. The Lord caught you a long time ago. Internet won't fly when you can do better. Now, I'm gonna say, you know, here, here's what I like about it. See, God wouldn't put up with that mess. God just kill you. But Jesus has enough mercy. So Jesus says, be as wise as a serpent and as harmless as a dove. Now watch this now. Now don't injure yourself playing games. See, if you can come, then come. Why? Why should I come? If I can get it on the internet, why do I need to come? Because you can't look in my eyeball on the internet. We can't fellowship on the internet. Amen. I want to feel 98.6. I don't want to touch buttons on my cell phone. I want to see Ariana's eyes. She's been gone for, I told her, three years or whatever, whatever now. See, like three years. I, 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 you know, now I'm, I'm all right. Now I've had the fellowship. Now it's good for your parents tell us about her, how she's doing, and everything. Talk to her on the phone, and everything. You know, all that. that that's that's well and good. But that's not, that's not like seeing her eyeballs. Nothing like fellowship. You cannot get around fellowship. That's why Jesus said they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. Doctrine and fellowship is connected together, coordinating conjunction. Doctrine equal to fellowship, fellowship equal to doctrine. You cannot get fellowship on TV. Now, if you can't come to where the fellowship is, the Lord allows you for a time to get it together. Don't ride that horse too long. Because pretty soon, when you ride him too long, he's going to get tired of carrying you. 
Amen. All right? So, so to the Lord helps us spiritually. All right? Now, now, let, 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 let's wrap this lesson up. Let's bring quickly Jesus to the table and we'll close this lesson out now. Helping time. We all need some help. Everybody needs some help. You ain't got no money, you need some help. You're not feeling good, you need some help. Children not acting right, need some help. Spouse not acting right, you need some help. Your job's not right, you need some help. We are hurting. We are the most blessed nation in the world, but we are a hurting nation. Anytime that you have a nation like ours, and you have about 40% of the people that want to move from democracy to autocracy, you got some miserable people. Let me tell you something. Democracy is what works for everybody. Everybody has some say so. Autocracy only works for somebody who sits at the top. Now, if you sit at the top and get all of the caviar, and I'm at the bottom getting barely the scraps, pretty soon I'm not going to put up with that. I want some caviar like you got. Amen. You got a warm house? I want a warm house. Amazon is feeling the under this though something so you have to see how God works. Amazon is a massive company. Y'all just get on your computer, you you just order and they, they bring it right to your house, right? You know, they bring it to your house and everything, you know. That's good, you know. But what's happening, what's happening is, see, they got control of you. Because, see, they've gotten you to a point now where, I don't want to go to the shopping center. It's too crowded out in the shopping center. Now, you used to live in the shopping center. You used to work out in the shopping center. You used to stay in the shopping Oh, we're going to the, we're going to the mall. We're going, everybody's going to the mall. The mall of America. The mall here. The mall, the mall. Nobody's talking about the mall now. They're talking about the hall that's at home. And Bezos just sat back and look at what I got. It's all coming to me. And when one man gets that kind of power, one man will control the masses. The only man that's able to do that is Jesus. I trust no man on earth. That's why I put my trust in Jesus. Now watch what's happening to Amazon right now. Quietly but slowly. Their employers are saying, we want a union. Because they don't pay us like we ought to be paid. And quietly, it's hard for them to get people they need to run that big organization. People don't want to go to work there. So what happens? Begins to crumble. The Lord works as He helps, slow, steady, but continuous. And Christians, we are blessed in so many ways. Here's the advantage the Christian has. When you face hard times, you can call on Jesus and he'll soften the blow until the storm rolls over. Or when the storm is coming through, Jesus all of a sudden has placed you over in another territory. Storm comes through. Oh, I missed that storm. No, you didn't miss it. Jesus just moved you over here. Never forget when we had a big, big plane crash, the one that came out of Chicago years ago, one, one, one guy that was just about ready to get on the plane. And something happened, 
that, that he couldn't get on the plane. Oh, I almost, almost got on that plane. But, you know, I, 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 I didn't get on that plane. I almost, I almost, I. No, the Lord, it wasn't your time. The Lord, now watch, let's watch Jesus now. How does Jesus help? Let's look through the eyes. Now, I look through the eyes of King David. I look through the eyes of Jeremiah. But I can't look through the eyes of Jesus. Now, what I can do is look through the essence of Jesus. Oh, y'all got me there? You see, 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 as finite people, we can't look through the eyes of Jesus. Because you, you don't have that good enough vision. But we can look through the essence of Jesus. Now, what is the essence of Jesus? Well, number one, his, he, how does he help? He gives me eternal love. In other words, when he loves me, he doesn't love me. You know, when I get my weight down, he, he, he loves me when I'm fat. And he'll help me to get my weight down. So he, he is an eternal love helper. You know, you know it, it's, it, it's, it's equal to his tenure. In other words, as long as Jesus lives, I got his love. That's what I call eternal love. Now, see, that's the first thing you really need is the love of Jesus. And it doesn't come the way you want it to come. So stop getting that little nasty attitude and getting a little pride because you got a, a few little material blessings in your circle. That doesn't mean the Lord will snatch it all away from you. The Lord will, bl you remember that, that, that song, you know, the three little pigs that blow your house down? The Lord will blow your house down. Not only that, how do, let's look at the essence of Jesus. He has an elevating help. What do I mean by elevating help? If I be lifted up. You remember the one thing they didn't see? What you got to do, ladies and gentlemen, what we got to do, what, what our nation has got to do, and what our people have got to do is listen to what Jesus really said. Jesus told, he, he told them back there when they were getting ready to crucify him, he said, now look, look I'm going to tell you all something right now. If you all put me on the cross, if I be lifted up, I'm going to mess up your mind. And they ran right headlong into lifting him up on that cross. And when he was lifted up on that cross, the first thing that happened is the sun refused to shine at midday. Right off the bat, nature was answering to Jesus. There came forth from the grave and walked the streets of Jerusalem. He shed his blood. He said, if I be lifted up, now, and that still is true today. All of you that are here this morning and those in the virtual audience, and so forth, you got to lift the Savior up. We got too many people talking the game that they, they, they are Christian, but they just talk, it's a talking game. Lift the Savior up the way he wants to be lifted up. Not how you lift him up. He's an elevated, he has an elevating help. All right, let me move on. How does Jesus help? The essence of his help? He has an enriching help. What do I mean by enriching? Well, are you just existing? Or are you living? Jesus offers not only just existing, existence, not only just living, but he offers the abundant life. What's the abundant life? The abundant life is I don't have to have a new car because somebody else got one. I appreciate the state that I am in. I'll take my health any day over a new car. The abundant life. I stood up this morning. That's the abundant life. I got here early this morning. Andre was playing a song. I said, play that song one more time. That's the abundant life. My hurts are the past. 
I've gotten over this. That's the abundant enriching life. When you're carrying the stuff from last year, you're missing the enriching life. Paul said, forget those things that are behind. Press on. You know, somebody that treated you bad last year, but don't be carrying that stuff around. Make you sick. I had an employer, and one of them, this is, this is Terry's employee. <laughs> Lord, I, I blame everything on Deuce. I blame everything. That's, that's why I like to have Deuce around, because I can blame everything on him. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Called himself a pastor. He said, you know what, to apologize. I'm a man just like you are. Human being. I got something deeper than what you got. Jesus. You didn't know what you were doing. I know what you're doing, but you don't know what you're doing. Amen? And, and, and when, you, when you're a Christian, you know what people are doing. They just don't know what they do. So that put, that puts you, you know, that, that's the abundant life, all right? The, the, the essence of Jesus. What, what else is he do? How else does he help? There is the enticing help. Enticing help. Yeah, that's just like my wife, she messed with me yesterday. She made that grilled cheese. You know, you know, sometimes a grilled cheese just tastes good. Just a grill you don't you don't need all just a grilled cheese sandwich. The right texture. You know, you don't want it burnt, you know, you want it brown. Textured, you know, butter, cheese, you know, enticing. That I needed a second. Yeah, amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, see, what, what, we, what we try to do is make the Lord's worship so you, if you, if you don't show up, you, if there's something that clicks in your mind, I should have been there. Jesus makes it enticing. Even though you might hear it virtually, but it's not like hearing it. I don't want to go to a virtual heaven. No way, no way, no way, Jose. I want a real heaven. Enticing. Uh, he loved me first. So he, he has an enticing help. Now let me let me give you two more and I'll, I'll wrap this thing up now. The essence of Jesus, he has what is called an en, enrapturing help. Enrapturing help. What's the enrapturing help? Now let me, let me let me clarify a point here. There's a word that doesn't even appear in the Bible. It's called the rapture. We got some denominations all the time about the rapture coming, the rapture this and the rapture. That. There's no such thing as the raptures in the Bible. That, that, that Jesus is going to come back here and set up his kingdom. Why would he want to come back to this mess here? He already died to clean up the mess. The Bible says that he'll come and he'll meet the righteous in the air. And he'll take them back to heaven. All the hellish folk, he'll send them to hell where they belong. He's not going to carry you to hell. He's going to send you there. But he'll take you back to heaven. The enrapturing Jesus, the enrapturing help is that you praise the Lord. Instead of mumbling, I start shouting. We don't have enough shouting folk. Lord have mercy. You know, if, if you're walking today, you ought to be shouting. Too many people are mumbling. When you murmur and mumble and murmur, you don't solve the issue. Say hallelujah and move ahead. See, some things the Lord doesn't bless you with right now, but he'll bless you with it later when you're able to handle it better. Lord have mercy. For some things, if you'd gotten it earlier, you'd have messed it up. That's why every now and then, you know, there are many, many, many people we've baptized in the church. Never see them again until about 30 years later. Then they all of a sudden show up and say, oh, now it's time for me to get back. See, once the seed is planted in a person, it never leaves. You may leave, but the seed doesn't leave. When you put a seed in the ground, it's going to be in the ground. Now, it, 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 it may never germinate, but it's in the ground. 
You, you ever planted something in the ground that didn't germinate, and all of a sudden it shows up? It's, it's kind of, it's, you know, it's kind of like dandelions. You know, you kill them dandelions, and all of a sudden next year they show up again. Lord, them, them dandelions that just, just keep showing. You know, and the dandelions are pretty when they got the little yellow flowers and every little yellow flowers all over here. I, I told my, my wife, we, we, got, we got to get rid of these dandelions. I said, well, just be patient. Just be patient. They're going to disappear. Just, just hang around. Just hang around because they're going to turn into little white flowers. See, the yellow flowers become the little white puffballs. Isn't that, isn't that pretty? See, look, look at the beauty of God. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? I said, you're, 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 you're. Now, 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 my son, he don't, he don't like, you know, he won't, if, if it's one little yellow flower, like, I got to get, that's got to go, that's got to go, that's got to, that's got to go. Look at those pretty little yellow flowers. Amen. Yeah, you got to do all that work and getting all them things out there and spending that money for that fertilizer. Give the money to the church. Goodness gracious. Because the yellow flower is going to go, the little white flower is going to go, and pretty soon, you know, long about the late June or early July, everything gone. And my yard looked just as good as everybody else's yard. They've been out there working and plowing and digging and so forth and missing church. I see a lot of them out there on Sundays, you know, working in the yard with their little hats on and all that, with the hoe and just digging in the Lord's dirt and don't go worship the Lord at, at, at any time. And I'm in my car going to worship, and my yard looks just like yours. In July, all our yards look the same. And if we don't get too much rain, everybody's yard is brown. Mine is brown and theirs is brown. Everybody's same color, right? Amen? There's no dandelions. Every, everything is cool, calm, color. It's in other words, so the enrapturing is you learn to praise the Lord. The help of the Lord is you praise him. Praising God and having faith with all the people, the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. And then finally, there's another help. Essence of Jesus is the ennobling help. Well, Terry, what do you mean by the ennobling help? The ennobling help. That means it is a dependent kind of help. He makes you dependent on him. It's like a newborn baby, just like, just like Terrence. His baby is dependent on him and uh, Ariana, dependent. We become dependent on, that's the ennobling aspect, essence of Jesus. We are dependent on the Lord. You got to start looking at it that way. I depend on the Lord. The next time I get a little cash in my pocket, the Lord put it there. Don't, don't be talking about, I'm so good, I made it happen. The Lord made it happen. Not only are you dependent, you are determined to obey Jesus. When you're ennobled, you're determined that you're going to obey him in the worship. You're going to obey him in the work. You're going to obey him in how you carry yourself in your lifestyle. And not only that, are you determined, you're going to be directed to follow Jesus. That ennobles you. I will follow Jesus. And finally, you're going to be divinely inspired by Jesus. You're not inspired by human beings. Human beings cannot inspire you. They can cause you to perspire. You know, a lot, a lot of times we sweat because of what human beings do to it, but the Lord inspires us. As I close... Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Went just a little longer than I intended to, but since we're not going to have Sunday school, I might as well give it to you myself. <laughs> Lord have mercy. They said they wasn't going to have it, but we just had it. Y'all just had it. You know? Those of you who've been getting up and not going to Sunday school, you just went through Sunday school, all right? All right, Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, verse number 31. Now let's, let's close with Jesus' Sermon on the Mount now. Jesus, now, here's what he says now. The essence of Jesus. He says, Terry, Terry, Terry. Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? 32. He says, for after all these things do the Gentiles seek. Now, at this particular time, the Gentiles do not have the advantage of the Jews at this time. But pretty soon they will. But at this time, I, I, I see, because I got TV audience out there. At this time, the Gentiles could not be saved. At this time. But when Christ died on the cross and shed his blood, then we become one in Christ Jesus. All right? But now, he says, now, even the Gentiles seek after these things. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all... The Lord knows what we have need of. 
The Lord knows I need my medication. The Lord knows I need to lose some weight. The Lord needs, knows that I need to read my Bible more. The Lord knows that I need to talk to my children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, my great-great-grandchildren. The Lord knows I need to quit making excuses on why I can't serve the Lord. The Lord knows. The Lord knows all of this. All right, now watch out. What, what else did Jesus say? Jesus then goes on to say in verse number 33, but he said, now, the Lord knows all this here, but that's a coordinating conjunction. Seek ye first the church. That's the same as the kingdom of God. And his righteousness. Don't just come to church and be unrighteous. So we've got a lot of folk come to church, but they're unrighteous. Seek the church and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Why can't I get what he got? Stop trying to get what he got and get what Jesus got. And then Jesus will give you what you have. Because what you have may be better for you than what he's got that you can't handle. Lord have mercy. All right. But then he closes out by saying, Take therefore no thought for tomorrow. We got too many people wearing about tomorrow. On Christmas Eve, Brother Mallory didn't know that he was going to miss Christmas Day. Nor did he know that just about 10 days later, his beloved wife will come right behind And they are lockstep together under the wings of Jesus. He didn't know that. Take no thought for tomorrow. For tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil. You just got to deal with whatever you got to deal with today. So Jesus' help will be what? Jesus' help will be available and not absent. Jesus' help will be steady and not shaky. His help will be strong and not weak. His help will be internal and not external. His help will be sizable and not small. His help will be transforming and not trampling. His help will be accessible and not hard to obtain. His help will be nice and not nasty. His help will be caring and not a curse. And finally, his help will be encouraging and not discouraging. May the Lord bless every last one of you. We need his help today. We need the help. We need the help. And Jesus has the help. As we get ready to stand and sing the song of invitation, don't let this year go by and you have not built your relationship with the Savior like it ought to be. You need today's help. And help doesn't come by your job. It comes by heaven. Heaven is the emitter of help. Heaven is the emitter of lasting help. Heaven gives us a partnership in our help. Children, you, you, my young people in school, learn to bring Jesus to the table when you're taking your tests. Lord, turn on my brain. Now, here's the thing now. The Lord will turn on your brain. Make sure you put something in the same. I just thought I'd drop that while I'm passing by. See, if you don't put anything in the brain, the Lord can't turn it on. Because if you got an empty brain, when he turns it on, you got an empty nothing coming out. That's why you need to study ahead of time. It's just like coming to, that's why we have classes at church, to put something in the brain. That way, Jesus said, now, lay up in heaven, store treasures in heaven. That by when you call on the Lord, you got something that he can deliver to you. You put nothing in heaven, he can't send you anything to the earth. As we stand right now for the invitation song, won't you come and get your life? We'll pray for you. You can be baptized today. You can be added to the church today. Jesus can become your helper today. As Brother Slade leads us in the song, would you now come? May the Lord bless you.